Hi, in this video, we'll be learning on how to know the pathway of your destiny by the ministry of Apostle Joshua Selman. Stay connected and be blessed. God bless you. So, for someone you find out as a young lady in your teens, while other ladies are rushing and exploring all kinds of things, God seems to separate you. A gentleman comes to stand close to you. God wants you in a dream. Let me not see you with that gentleman again. And you are wondering, what is different about my life? It is the destiny of Esther that is calling. Is someone understanding now? It is the destiny of Mary. There is a particular consecration that leads to that destiny. Unfortunately, there are many people jumping and saying, I will be great, I will be great. No, it is not chanting it. There is a pathway that if you do not follow, you will never become that person. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verses 130, the entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. Let me teach you something. When you start with Jesus, your destiny is not revealed to you. It is only Jesus that is revealed. It is as you look at Jesus, you will start finding your destiny. Are you, are you, are you getting me now? When, when Jesus calls you, the mission is follow me, not follow it. So, you can find five young men all of you got saved and you started loving the lord and going to church your attention is on jesus let's assume now that this man is jesus are we together you are looking on to jesus among the five gentlemen one has been ordained to be a prophet one has been ordained to be a kingdom financier one has been ordained to be an apostle are we together now one has been ordained to be to serve in Korea, but they all do not know it is as you look at Jesus and as you have been transformed the Holy Ghost starts doing a work in you that guy that wants to become a prophet will find out that an unusual grace for prayer starts coming on him that is not like the other people he does not even know what is happening to him others will pray for one hour and say I need to go out and it's like something will constrain him and say you remain now destiny is being unveiled this is what has been happening to some of you that you do not even know now you are getting to a point of your training and your transformation am, am i am i am i speaking to you now this process of discovering your destiny in christ and remaining there look up this is what the bible calls consecration now for most people our idea of consecration is not complete the word consecrate has two expressions number one the first dimension of consecration has to do with getting away from are we together now abstinence and there are things the bible tells us to flee from but the second dimension of consecration has to do with devotion so abstinence and devotion if the only thing you have done is abstinence you are not consecrated to consecrate means to set apart now this gentleman in the process has now transformation is creating consecration are we together the grip of the flesh the grip of slumber sin all kinds of things is breaking in experience from his life but that is not all that will make him great now he begins to find out from his prophetic destiny like jeremiah that he was ordained to be a prophet the second dimension of consecration is that that must become his singular goal now that you know your destiny in christ you must lay aside every weight and the sin that don't easily beset you and run with perseverance the race that is set before you so you find out that this guy this becomes his singular pursuit and the holy ghost listen the holy ghost will start leading him through experiences that he may not understand initially but the more he starts reading the bible he will find out that what is happening to him 
is what happened with every prophet God used. That means, listen, you can know your destiny by looking at the parallel of your training in scripture. The pattern of your training reveals where God intends to take you to. So, for someone you find out as a young lady in your teens, while other ladies are rushing and exploring all kinds of things, God seems to separate you. A gentleman comes to stand close to you. God wants you in a dream. Let me not see you with that gentleman again. And you are wondering, what is different about my life? It is the destiny of Esther that is calling. Is someone understanding now? It is the destiny of Mary. There is a particular consecration that leads to that destiny. Unfortunately, there are many people jumping and saying, I will be great, I will be great. No, it is not chanting it. There is a pathway that if you do not follow, you will never become that person. Do you understand what I've said so far? So the gentleman finds out that he has, the more you are walking with God, the more you are learning under your pastor, there is such an unusual acumen for revelation and understanding. Even among his peers, they begin to say, this guy is intelligent. You know, his intellectual acumen, his ability to understand scripture. What kind of grace is looking for this guy? The Holy Ghost is diverging him to the place of his destiny. This person will now become a mighty apostle of the spirit, opening scriptures. Or a gentleman, you find out that the more you are loving God, you are serving in church. It looks like great people always seem to identify you. When they want to do something, you are the one. They, they don't even know what is driving them. It is because there is a Daniel in you crying. Listen, do you understand what I'm teaching you so far? That the reason why many believers do not become great, please pastor come again, is that when they are saved, they just sit down and what they tell them is discover your purpose. In other words, sit down, crack your brain and just guess what you want to become. No, the Bible says we have been predestined. The word predestined means God is not scratching his head wondering what you will become. In Christ, there is a portion for you already. But entering into the experience of it is predicated upon the pathway you follow. When you follow the pathway of Elijah as Esther, you will not become Esther. You will become Elijah because the pathway of Elijah leads to Elijah. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? So as the pastor begins to train you, the Holy Ghost begins to improve on that training and you find out that sometimes out of so many people, you are the only one who seems to go, be going through a particular kind of training. God is raising you to be a kingdom financier. And you find out that while you are praying, one day, God will tell you, empty your account. He will not tell everybody because everybody is not following that pattern. But you, because of what he's trying to produce, it's not about money. He's killing greed and he's crucifying mammon in your life because he will be trusting you with billions for the kingdom. And he has to help you so that that dimension of flesh is broken. So you will find out that to many people around you, you are not making sense to them. You were giving 100,000 and you gave it away. You said God said. Another 500,000 came and you gave it away. Ah, something must be wrong with you. But you see, when you complete that training, there is a kind of believer you will become where God will trust you with one billion and you say, Lord, it is still your money. And people are saying, how come you are not connected to it? And you tell them I was trained well. During the process of training and transformation, God led me through a pathway. Am I right on that? Now, back to the university system. The pathway that produces a doctor is not the pathway that produces an engineer. It's not a pathway that produces an architect. Am I right on that? The assignment of the university is to be an institution that has several pathways leading to several fields. So if they give you admission, are we together now? The lecturer and the system helps to direct you. How many of you know that sometimes when you are dealing with people who are working across science-based subjects, in 100 level they do almost everything together 
but it is not everything they are becoming both the engineer the doctor somebody who is reading whatever they are attending the same lectures but the divergence will happen eventually when 100 level is done so five of you you are all praying you are all fasting you are loving the lord but you soon find out that this sister's training has started changing this sister's training her passions are changing it's not the same like everyone's passion that is destiny in christ calling when you see those you call great it's not that god chose to make them great all of a sudden it was in their destiny the difference between you and them is that they found the pathway that was going to lead there and they followed it accordingly do you understand what i'm teaching you now now watch this this gentleman has the destiny of a prophet god wants him to be great but this gentleman did not have an opportunity to be mentored by a great pastor and so he became careless look at where he should be going and according to god's program for his life god's program for his life is that by the time he gets to 30 years he should have started manifesting but this gentleman is celebrating his birthday 28 29 and while they are clapping on earth heaven is saying souls are dying the people you were mandated to prophesy to have remained because it was in your destiny to open the doors for them are you getting it now so every time he goes to bed the holy ghost comes and uses some of the dreams that you people are seeing he will see himself prophesying to people is the holy ghost quickening in him and saying you don't need to rest something is crying within you one day they will give him a mic to lead prayer and he will stand to lead prayer in jesus name five minutes prayer becomes 15 minutes and he drops the mic and does not even know why he touched a bit of the anointing he should be using and that's what produced that result and yet he will return back look at me this man can become 70 years old and what was in the heart of the father never finds expression and then he can create his own destiny because god gave you a will he now has children he now has whatever it is can i tell you when god is rewarding men there is no reward for this guy based on his destiny even though he's saved because the reward is to the degree low i come in the volume of the book as it is written of you to do thy will not what i want your will so are you understanding what i'm teaching you now there was a little boy in the bible called samuel when do you know why god had to allow hannah to vow a vow before samuel came if she did not have to wait that long samuel will never become a prophet because she would not take him to the temple but the training demanded that he will leave his physical father and mother this is how this destiny thing is serious that there are some of you you did not grow up with your parents you don't even know why because your parents would never have allowed you come for a meeting like this so god had to literally make you get admission in a university you did not plan for that is how much god can move people to make sure they find that pathway samuel you have the destiny of being the great israel but your mother cannot train you no it is not given to her your father elkanah cannot train you it will take eli to train you but the compassion of your parents will not allow them to release you for destiny so god had to wait until anna said lord i covenant with you if you give me that child i will not interrupt the part of his training she prayed once once and samuel came when samuel came watch this samuel is sleeping close to the ark look at the kind of consecration that brought that prophet i hope you know samuel did not even have an opportunity to do many things because he was in the temple 
his vessel had to be so pure to carry that kind of mantle that will ordain kings so because of that there was no risk god had to make sure he remained in the temple and one night the boy was sleeping and he hears a voice and he got up and went to eli and eli said no go back and sleep and he went back to sleep hmm. and the voice came again and when it came eli got up uh, samuel got up and went to eli and eli said i'm not the one but he said ah i understand there is a path god takes men who will become prophets your season is starting he said next time when he speaks i am your teacher but i'm not your only teacher there is another teacher too we are in partnership say speak lord for thy servant heareth and that became what gave birth to the mighty samuel if samuel did not rise saul will not rise the kings that you see would not rise because he was the one who ordained them only god knows how many people today who would have been healed if you had found your path early in life only god knows how many people today as a kingdom financier you would have stopped their children from becoming prostitutes if only you manifested consecration is not just abstaining from sin and distractions but wholeheartedly devoting yourself to that which your destiny demands the bible says no man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this world you know what that means that when you discover jesus you will find your place there is a way he will start building you there is a kind of believer you will start becoming and find it he says stay there let me submit to you that process of transformation which doubles as the process of training is the hardest period for a believer's life because even if you are a husband and a wife your trainings will be different hmm. this is where men are separated from boys and god can give this man an instruction and say for the next two years every 12 midnight to 3 a.m in the morning i will be meeting with you so you find out that this guy whereas for another person he has the luxury of sleeping but because of what god needs to do in his life 12 a.m the holy ghost is there in his room and he wakes up he can be tired sometimes you can pity him and say won't you rest and heaven says no there is a kind of person he needs to become and the king's business requires haste every day 12 to 3 sometimes with sleepy eyes you are praying sometimes with sleepy eyes you are studying and one day the god of heaven the one who visits men he will visit this gentleman and give him a call and place a mantle on his life it is when that mantle comes and you begin to see what that mantle can do you look at his life and say is this not the carpenter's son uh -uh. he was the carpenter's son but this version of him is not the carpenter's son this is Ephesians 2 and verse 10 this is what he has become we are his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus look at it Ephesians 2 10 I'm saying this because we are going to pray somebody must your destiny must be redirected back redirected back in the name of jesus christ we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works which god had before ordained before ordained that we should walk in them anybody you see that you admire in the kingdom whether as a preacher as a businessman who loves jesus can i tell you midwifing their salvation experience and their manifestation was this painful season of training can i give you one more example the bible talks about a young boy called joseph joseph was the least of his brothers am i right on that the innocent boy went to go and sleep and suddenly had a dream in that dream he saw the sun the moon 
the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowing. He got up and came to his brothers and said, Daddy, I went to bed and this is what I saw. And Jacob looked at him and said, Ah, so among all my children, finally I've seen the person. This is the one the mantle is looking for. So one day you are saying, I will bow to you. Your mother will bow to you. When the brothers had it, they were angry. But for as long as Joseph was willing, there was a pathway. Don't just celebrate the Joseph in the palace. Celebrate the one who agreed to go and see his brothers that entered the pit. When Joseph was in the pit, I'm sure he would say, God, what is this? What is the meaning of this? Why am I the only one who is in the pit among my brothers? Then he was sold. You would have called it retrogression. But look at the invisible hand of prophecy that was moving that boy. I hope you know Egypt was his place of dominion. Look at how he got there. He gets to Egypt and he begins to serve Potiphar. And that grace on his destiny was so speaking to the point that Potiphar's wife, huh? Potiphar's wife now looked at the innocent gentleman. And when she looked at him, the Bible says she began to seduce him and look at what he had to he had to he had to to endure so much eventually it took him to the prison the prison is a mysterious place in the path of destiny because the prison is where both good and bad people meet the prison is like the cross Jesus you will still hang there if you are a thief you will still hang there so don't judge people when you see them on the cross because you will not know who is Jesus and who is the thief the cross is where both good and bad people hang. The prison is where both Joseph and the wine presser is there. These are two areas and these are two places in life and destiny. When you find yourself in the prison and you find yourself in the cross, you must be sensitive. Joseph is in the prison. Watch this. Not knowing that is the path to destiny. And then overnight to cut the long story short that young boy rises and becomes a prince in egypt and pharaoh said i am joseph and it is only at thy word that things will happen in egypt now you would admire him and say i love joseph i want to be like joseph no there is a pathway that leads to joseph joseph is not only a name Joseph is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Esther is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Elijah is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Are we together now? Gideon, all these names you call in the Bible, they are not just names of human beings. They are, they are secret pathways in the spirit that men can follow, including Jesus. Apostle, I sense that I carry the destiny of Abraham. You better be ready to give up Isaac. You better be ready. Uh -uh. If ye be, <laughs> it says, if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. I want a double portion of Apostle Paul's mantle. Apostle Paul is not just the name of a man. There is a road in the realm of the spirit that is named in honor to such a man. You see, do you know why God names himself as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The God of Abraham is not the God of Isaac in terms of the manifestations. It is still the same God. But the way God deals with you as the God of Abraham is not the way he deals with you as the God of Isaac. These men pioneered virgin dimensions in the spirit to the point that God named himself after their experience. So he said, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He said, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Then he says, this is the generation that seek you that seeks you, O God of Jacob. Do you know what that means? The God of Jacob is the God of encounters. Every time you want an encounter, God will refer you to the experience of Jacob because a man walked with God and pioneered that virgin dimension in the spirit that anytime a man wants an encounter with God, 
the biblical figure to study is Jacob. Your assignment is that at the end of your life, your destiny will add to the names of God. That there should be a kind of name that God will be called on account of your experience. Your experience should give God a name. Isaac, Jacob and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob are not the only names God wants to be called. He wants to be called the God of Joshua Selman. But you see, it's not just to say the God of Joshua Selman in terms of an anointed man. No. It is a pathway in the spirit that you follow. You follow it so excellently. God honors you by naming himself. Now, watch this. So every time you come to God and God reveals your destiny to you, you will have an array of spiritual pathways that leads to specific kinds of believers. You will all be believers, but the geography of your assignments are not the same. So if you see yourself being Esther in the spirit, your next assignment is to find out the path Esther followed. Did the Bible not say, follow them who through faith and patience so the lady now begins to study the life of esther what did esther do the holy ghost starts leading you through that pathway you want to be a great apostle paul and you find out that five years after graduation it looks like god has not told you what to do with your life you want to walk he stopped you you want to travel abroad he stopped you you want to open a church he stopped you what should i do oh god you just pray fast and serve. Is that all I'm going to do with my life? Uh -uh. There is a kind of believer you are becoming. And that kind of believer that is consistent with my will for you will demand that you go through this pathway. Is someone learning now? Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along? It's a highway. We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. 